Oh, the Sex Pistols, one of the all-time great anarchic bands. You can listen to that all day. Fortunately, we've got one of the men behind it. Johnny Rotten, John Lydon, the great man, here. Here, live! Peace. Unleashed, great to see you. <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing a regular catch-up with you called Johnny's Rotten World. Because the last time he came on, it popped so well on YouTube. Everyone was watching this. They love your unvarnished, uncensored view of life. Well, I like to tell it as it is. Yeah. You know, I'm not influenced by the media. Yeah. But they are very seriously influenced by me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You just come. You were rehearsing with your new band Pill today yeah, in London. Yeah, I'm straight out of rehearsal, so forgive me if I look a bit sweaty and moist. <laughs> the girlies apparently like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you about politics for a moment? Because you said something quite interesting in the last few days. You talked about how it used to be the right that was seen to be the completely intolerant fascists who never allow people to have different opinions and so on. And now it's gone full circle oh, it's absolutely to the left. Swings and roundabouts now, isn't it? I, I can't trust anything coming out of Labour anymore. I, I, I began to despise them. Really? Yeah, it's too... It, they, they, this woke agenda mm. and all of this nonsense, I can't be tolerating that. You know, why have we, I, I'd, why have we I'd gone rather down vote this? Conservative because at least I, I, I can rely on their hypocrisy, but mm. I don't want to vote for lunacy. Mm. It's plain and simple. When you see the debate over Boris Johnson and these parties, the, really at the core of it, it's just that they were all partying in Downing Street when they were telling everybody else, yeah. you can't go and see your dying relatives in yes, hospital. Yes, that white man speak with forked tongue, yeah. you know? Do you Boris. think he's a liar, Boris? Oh, completely. Mm. It's, you know, if you're going to write these laws in and insist on them and then deliberately go and break them yourself, well, that's, that kind of hypocrisy is, is just a little unfeasible for me. And so, sod him, you know. He's like all politicians, really, a professional liar, but, mm. by God, that... Bloke bone you had on there defending him. Wow, what a piece of work. <laughs> he reminded me of that old Tory kind of creature that I mm. used to really, really hate and loathe. So, mm. you know, get rid of both of them and things might be on the lookup. Yeah, but we... on top of that, I would like a Prime Minister that is capable of partying, but then don't be introducing laws that you're not going to follow yourself and expect the rest of us to oblige you right. to that. Right. It's the hypocrisy is the problem. Right. Oh, it's wicked. Wicked. I wish I was at that party, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd have livened it up. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean? We're in, obviously, Jubilee Week, and God Save the Queen was this iconic anthem at the time. It was all about anarchy and so on. You've, you've softened a little bit over the years. Is that right? Say about the Queen in particular? No, no, this is the media again trying to uh, uh, take the detonation out of the, uh, the H-bomb I dropped on that song. Uh, I'm as... Uh, as uh, solid about monarchy and my, my uh, dislike of it as I ever have been. To me, I've always viewed the royal family as a bunch of German and tourists with a Greek thrown in, mm. you know? Uh, but as a human being, right? She ain't no human being as representing a state. She doesn't represent me. I don't want to pay no more tax to keep that, that institution alive. But I totally respect her mm. as, as a real person, that she has endured that and maintained, yes, a sense of dignity in it. And I'm always attracted to pageantry. Mm. This is, you know, I grew up loving me Arsenal. And we, right. if we weren't waving our flags, that's as close to pageantry <laughs> as you can get. There's also it something, be... I just think when you look at the way politics has gone around the world, really, there's so, so much corruption, so much hypocrisy, so much, you know, really incredible characters yeah, getting it, to run they, countries. They, they, yeah, and, and you think, at least the, in the Queen's case, you've got this woman who's barely put her foot wrong, She's dignified, she's yeah. humble. And so I respect like consoling. all of that. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's almost, if you just view her as a sort of calming figurehead for the country, she's been one of the most impressive people that we've ever had, I would say. Yeah, but God bless if she kicks the bucket, what's going to follow? Well, that is a genuine problem. I mean, tonight we had the Archbishop of Canterbury saying that, for example, we should now be looking to forgive people like Prince Andrew that he's shown that he wants to make amends yeah. for what he did. But my, my issue with well, that... first John... of all, find him guilty before you forgive. Right. right? It, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, I mean, I'm sorry, but that has the ring of child molester about it. You mean in, in terms of the way the, the church... The has... church, all of these institutions. And, of course, they all cover themselves up. But, as I say, first find him guilty of something. It's obviously he's hiding something. 
I don't trust him. And when you have a when you have the Queen's son, who pays millions of dollars yeah. to a woman who was accusing him of having in America underage sex with her and being involved in sex trafficking with a paedophile. Yep. When he does that, having said, "I'm going to fight this and clear my name," even though he, he didn't. didn't, even though there was no guilt attached to this settlement, the fact he's had to pay millions of dollars. What does it say? A settlement is telling you everything. Uh, it's almost like a bribe to go away, isn't it? Mm. Uh, now, the poor lady in question, I mean, uh, she knew what they'd like. Uh, they'd rip her apart in court, is basically, you know, mm. so take this cash under, under, under hand. Uh, it's victimisation again, and if, that, if that's going on in the future royal family, I don't want none of them. Can you forgive somebody in this circumstance if they don't accept what they did? I mean, we don't even know what he actually did, because he, yeah. won't, he won't say. Can you offer forgiveness if people don't show any atonement for what they may have done? No, it, it, there's a holier-than-thou about it. Uh, uh, I just won't be tolerating. Mm. There's something there. Just bring it out, wash your dirty laundry in public and let us be the judge of that. Right. right? Not yeah. under, underhand deals going on. It, it, this is a continual world they're introducing us into, isn't it? Complete corruption. Well, I'd like to see a brave new world. I, I, I do think it's caused uncalculable damage to the royals because I think that we've never had a situation where the senior royal has been involved in a settlement like this. And it's not like it was a, you know, well, a sort of we, financial I, I issue. I think we have seen royals in the past histories are definitely involved in all manner of... I think in, mod <laughs> in modern times is what I would say. And, it, and it's a serious matter. You know, Jeffrey Epstein was a disgusting yeah, billionaire it's paedophile. It's not to be treated running up. No, not at all. And it, my real issue with it is that, that Andrew carried on seeing that guy after he admitted and was convicted of paedophile behaviour. Yeah, and there's all manner of money laundering possibilities lurking in the background right. of that too. But like why did he carry on being his friend? You know, because well, it, it's, this is my taxpayer money. It's right. how it's being spent. Right. You know, bugger off. Right. No, but I think I think it's a legitimate reaction that most people have to it. What What do you think about? The Jubilee celebrations. Are you going to get involved? Are you going to be in a street party? Are we going to see the man who sang God Save the Queen singing it with love and affection? <sighs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I love the party side of it. Right? Yeah. And, 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 that and the pageantry and, and, and everything. And the pageantry and the flag waving and, and being part of a, a wonderful bloody country. Mm. They've got no shame, but plenty of pride about Britain, and I'll wave the flag any way I like, safety pins included. Do we talk down the country too much, John? I think so. I do. Uh, that, that lady's done no personal harm to me. Mm. The institution has, and, and it's obviously riddled with corruption. You know, I, I just pity what comes after her. Mm. It just... I've got no hope for it. I think we should uh, really... Uh, Start voting on a, a new queen. Really? Yeah. Let's have an election. Who would you fancy? Meghan Markle? Or oh, someone from Australia. <laughs> 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 I want to ask you about something else. Top Gun. So I got very excited yesterday about Top Gun. I went to see Top Gun. I loved the new movie. I loved the first one. And to me, it restored masculinity and being Hooray. a man. Yeah. Do you see anything in this? Well, I'll tell you, there's a shortage of modern war movies, right? And uh, you do need those kind of characters, really, if your country's going to survive any threats of invasion. Mm. You need proper blokes to sort it out. Uh, and trying to sweep that under the carpet with this new era of woke is unacceptable mm. to me. It's, you know, I mean, men, men we, need, we need men's men. I'm sorry, but well, that's just the way it and is. And this is the idea that masculinity itself is wrong. Oh, toxic. Yeah, eh? It's all toxic. Yeah, I'll have a vodka and toxic masculinity, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it does annoy me. Because, of course, there it, are it, some men who are toxic. It, but there are also many men who can show masculine qualities, which actually not only are good qualities, but women like men to be masculine. Because that's human nature. Right. Right. And, and to go against nature really shows, like, a major flaw and a weakness in the idiocy that's coming from extreme left politics. I, I, I find it very, very alarming that young students are so quick to mm. jump on this, like, a 
name slurry business mm. without really thinking the thing through. But also, I think now, the students. But they're all dressed as men and women themselves. Yeah, and but they're I, arguing against. But this it. idea that, that a minister can go there who's only said yeah. that he believes a woman is an adult female. And for that, he has to be hounded with abuse. It's, yeah. Because you actually have Labour MPs now, women MPs, saying, actually, women can have penises. <laughs> well, of course they can. That's how you get babies. <laughs> 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 but is it, it, I sort of feel the world's gone mad a bit. If you're working against nature because of some new political fandangled theory, then you're, you're a bit of a fool. Mm. And I'm afraid the young are very, very foolish in this, and I must say, not all young. Mm. Just those who've gone through the uh, university systems, they seem to uh, not be educated anymore. They're really institutionalised. I want to play... We do a little segment called World's and Gone Nuts. most of them should be in an institution. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do a regular thing called World's Gone Nuts. I think you're going to like this story, John, because there's... This is actually something normally do at the end of the show. I'm going to play it, play it now. Watch this. The world's gone nuts. Now, this is a, a love story that might not take off. It involves 22-year-old Sarah Roder, who lives in Dortmund, Germany, and she's announced that she's in love with a Boeing 737 passenger jet and has plans to wed said jet. The future Mrs 737 identifies as an objectum sexual, meaning she's attracted to inanimate objects and has 50 replicas of the flying love machine. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it's not legal to actually marry a replica aircraft in Germany, but neither the law nor common sense to stop other people from doing things like this. In 2007, Erica Labrie married the Eiffel Tower, changing her last to Eiffel. And Kate Cunningham has been happily married to a tree for nearly three years. But true love never does run smoothly. Poor Akihiko Kondo, who married a hologram character, has been, le <laughs> has been left devastated after the expiration of the software meant he could no longer talk to his wife. <laughs> John, when you look at stuff like this, I, in a way, it's a kind of wonderful thing that there are people this mad out there, right? I think so, and I find that entertaining. But the, the shocking one, really, for me, was the girl fondling the 747 bottle. <laughs> I mean, that's one up on a battery-operated penis, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and God bless her, if, that, if that's what turns her on and rings her bell, you know? <laughs> Bong. <laughs> John, I could talk to you all night. Fortunately, we've only got to wait two weeks till you're back on. It's been brilliant to have you on Piers yeah. Morgan Uncensored. You are as uncensored as it gets. And thank God for somebody who just speaks their mind and doesn't care what all you cancel culture wokey say, because you can't cancel a sex pistol, right? You certainly can't. And I'm on <laughs> tour with Public Image Limited to prove it. Y'all come on down now. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Everyone a winner. John Lyden, brilliant bye to bye see you. Bye-bye from my man breasts. We will have John, Johnny's Rotten World every two weeks from now on because I cannot interview this guy enough. This is what we want in life. Plain talking. Straight talking. It's Uncensored. So e it's so easy to just tell the truth. You Isn't know? it? It is. And yet it's not easy for a lot of people. And I thank God people like you are doing it, and I'll do it too, and hopefully we'll put the world to right. Good to see you, John. Well, last thing on Boris. Rules are for fools, and he's proved the point by breaking his own. I think that bye, probably bye. perfectly sums it up. <laughs>